You just need to know, thank you very much. And they go, probably going to help her more than our surgery anyway. It was nice he said that. But it's kind of like, we don't know sometimes what the next procedure is going to be. And sometimes, even that much can be fatal during a procedure. So we need to ask them, like I didn't do, are you going to a procedure in a few minutes? Well, yeah. Oh, well, let's just don't do the Lord's Supper. I, I'll pray with you, but we're not going to do this bread in this cup of juice, okay? So little things we learn that we go, well, I never thought about that at my church. You don't have to. Now we're in a different arena. <laughs> so where we kind of look at what goes on here might affect differently. But check at the nurse's station, get to know them. Next is hand washing. We're going to talk about that a lot in a few minutes about hand washing. But just remember, every time you go in the room, wash your hands. There's a little dispenser. See that one on the wall there by the right side of the door? You kind of push on the bottom of it, kind of a little uh, dollar size, you know, silver dollar size, and wipe that in dry thoroughly. We'll talk about that a little more. Then smile. I have to work at that one. They tell me I have smiling eyes, but not a smiling voice. Well, I've got braces now, and I really don't want to smile now until I get these things off, you know. So I'm like working at smiling all the time. I'm happy. Sometimes I need to just work at smiling a little more. Because they need to know in their scary day that you're okay, okay? You bring a little brightness into the room. You help them out by just showing that. And then coming into the door and... Oop, that's so you can't even hear that, okay? And sometimes I'm quiet well as you can. Just a little knock. Sometimes I look around the corner. If they look sleepy, I might just see them later. I have a little business card and I go, I saw that you were sleeping. I'm praying for you. Put that on the table and go away. But you go, I traveled 45 minutes? <clears throat> well, I know. And sometimes I do. Come in and change. If I don't get a response, I don't like to startle. But if they said to you as a minister, I want to see you. I'm going to for a procedure at 3 o'clock this afternoon. I've got to see you. Okay? Maybe one of those times you, you'll wake them up. But I try to be polite in that. And then introducing myself as, hi, I'm Chaplain Larry. Now let me test out some of this volunteer stuff on you. What if I were to come over here to this fellow and go, Hi, I'm the volunteer block doctor today. Would that be okay if I take care of you? Sure. No, oh, boy, he's brave, isn't he? I'm the volunteer nurse here. I, I'm going to start an IV on you in a few minutes. You go, where's the real one? <laughs> well, they think the same thing when you say volunteer chaplain. Where's the real guy? So I say to you, introduce yourself as Chaplain Larry. Not volunteer chaplain Larry, but your badge will tell the truth, okay? It will tell you're really not on the staff here. You really don't get paid. You're not a professional chaplain. You're not lying about that. But it scares the pants off of it, okay? Because you're coming in there doing a professional ministry, and the first words you say are so powerful. In fact, like I said, if you come in and say, Hi, I'm Rabbi Larry, and I'm also a volunteer chaplain in the hospital. They're confused. It's too much information. Or I also preach down at the church down the street. It's like, but why are you here? Okay? It's confusing. <coughs> Just simply, <coughs> Chaplain Larry. And then you're kind of telling them why you're there so that you can introduce. The nurse called me. I hear that you got... You, when you came in, you asked for a chaplain. They go, did I? Well, that was a few hours ago, and it was, it was asked amongst 100 other questions. Okay, just kind of, I noticed that you had asked for the chaplain. Is it a good time for me to talk today? So slow down this introduction. Most people come in, hi, I'm Chaplain Larry. Who? <coughs> I'm Chaplain Larry Pope. You know, we slur to that. So slow that down. Make it casual. Make it calm. If I'm rushing in a room, like, whoa, remember, you're in their bedroom. You're in their space. Just because they're in a hospital doesn't mean everybody can come in when they want to. It's kind of like we go, well, I work here. I can just walk in. Nurses do that. Respiratory therapists do that. And all these hospital people do that because they own the place. It's like, you're in my place. You're visiting my place. But I want you to take the perspective, 
this is your bedroom. I'm coming here to visit you in your bedroom. And you're thinking that perspective, you'll give them more respect about their arena and their play. Then next, I want you to sit down. Have you heard the old saying, I don't have much time, so I'll stand? I'm going to shake up that saying. They've done some studies on sitting. We do studies on everything, don't we? And they watched, they asked hospital chaplain, they asked two of them to go visit all these patients on this wing. And they said to this chaplain, I want you to sit every time you go in, and I, I want this chaplain, I want you to stand. I want both of you to only visit five minutes. Both visit five minutes, you sit, you stand. At the end of the day, they surveyed those patients, they go, I had two chaplains come in and visit you today. Which one took the longest with you? And they would describe the person, the hair, or the name, or the glasses, whatever, and they go, the one that sat. Every time. So the perception is, even if I only have three minutes, if I sit down, it is perceived that it was longer than three minutes. If I only have 15 minutes, it perceived that I took longer. What happened to you when I have stood for the last 15 minutes and now I've sat? What did you notice different? I'm on your level. Before, if I'm standing over you, it's like I'm going to teach you something, right? I'm going to set you straight, or I'm over you. There's a perception that I'm on your level. What else? I'm open, okay? I'm open, I'm, I'm here to listen, I'm here to learn, I'm here to fellowship with you. Anything else? <coughs> Not in a hurry. Don't look like you're in a hurry. Not in a hurry. So what if there is no chair in this room? Or there's stuff on there. It's usually clean linen, dirty linen, something on the chair. If there's clean linen, I take the clean linen, and pass that to the bed. So if there's dirty linen, I don't touch it, okay? We'll talk about infection control in a moment. But I may go down the hallway, two doors, three doors down, find me a chair and bring it in, then I sit down. What did that communicate to that patient? I say, I'll be back in a few minutes, I'm gonna go find a chair because I'd like to visit with you. I'll be back in a few minutes and I'll sit down. What did that communicate? Because you have time. Have time? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, how about you're important to me. You're so important that I'm going to go find a chair to sit down. They go, wow. It's so important, folks. We had a CEO of a hospital visiting our city who got sick, came in our hospital, and a respiratory therapist, before they did their breathing treatment, sat down for a minute and a half and explained the breathing treatment and then stood up and did it. This CEO was so impressed, he wrote a letter to me, the patient representative of the hospital. I sent it to the CEO. So impressed, I've, I've been a hospital administrator forever. I've never heard of anybody taking the time to sit down and explain something to me. Wow. So I'm telling all of us, this isn't just for chaplains to sit down. It's for and nurses to go, I'm too busy. Do you have 15 seconds? that would be perceived as longer than 15 seconds. Okay? okay, and they go, I don't have 15 seconds. I know how busy they are. But if we have the moment to sit down to get eye to eye, the only time I don't sit down is when maybe the patient's in ICU and they can't sit up. They're in one recline, there's some procedures where they shouldn't sit up yet, or some maybe intubation or whatever they shouldn't. So in those moments, I stand and I get my head in line with their head because it's about them, right? Now, if I were to sit then, they're going, Larry, I can't see you. It's hard for them, right? So if I'm making it easy for them, comfortable for them, I might have to stand at certain times because of that. So again, you're keeping in line in mind what would be easy for the patient. Then cordial with staff interruptions is going to happen. This is a busy place. There's people coming in all the time. 
of nurses and respiratory therapists and physical therapists and speech pathologists and dietitians and administrators and, and uh, all of these are coming and they have their job.